New videos every day. I'm Dr. Vince Balanzi, and I work in a, with another doctor, Dr. John Hest. Uh, he's a medical doctor, I'm a chiropractor and a nutritionist, and we have an integrative medicine center. I wanted to talk a little bit about what we do with hormones. The bioidentical hormone idea is in the news, and, and people are asking a lot of questions about it. Uh, we do quite a bit with bioidentical hormones, and I, I wanted to maybe share some of our experience. When we talk about bioidentical hormones, we're really talking about not the difference between synthetic and non-synthetic, but we're simply talking about a hormone that's the, the, the best term for it is orthomolecular, but we're talking about hormones that have a molecular structure similar to what you already find in your body, and that's all bioidentical hormones are. The problem was that in the past and even present day, there are conjugated estrogens, there are different uh, substances that come from animals, such as out of mare's urine, and the idea of bio, bioidentical hormones came from the fact that in findings and studies, we see that if we use something close to what the body knows and is used to and has already been there, something bioidentical per se, then there's not a near as many problems, if any problems, as opposed to using something that's new to nature or, or that comes from another animal. Uh, the, the female body uh, just doesn't know what to do with most of the estrogens that come out of something like Premarin. Uh, the thing is there are 40 some uh, horse estrogens. You only are actually affected by a few of them. But the body has to metabolize as estrogens and it has to break them down safely. And the problem with the horse estrogens is that doesn't happen. And if you don't turn over your estrogens or break them down and metabolize them and, and are able to get rid of them, they can be turned into something very dangerous. So there are many, many problems with the non-bioidentical estrogens. So when we work with bioidentical estrogens, that's one of the problems. We're, we're, we're better off using something that works with the body, that the body recognizes that's already present in the body or at least has a molecular structure that's just that's like it. So we want to work with, with something that's physiological. We want to look at all the different hormones that are in the human body and create a balance. And that's really what has to be done with, with hormones. You, you can't simply, simply go buy a hormone uh, over the counter and just start taking it because there are so many hormones to, to look at. We want to look at some of the major hormones, especially things like testosterone and estrogen and progesterone, uh, perhaps looking at cortisol and... Uh, looking at other hormones like insulin, looking at hormones like thyroid, you have to look at the whole picture. Because if you affect one hormone, you affect them all. It's, it's probably not a good idea or it's not a good idea to simply pick a hormone and start taking it. Uh, for example, a woman goes into menopause and you decide, well, we'll just give her estrogen because her estrogen levels have gone down. Well, so have other levels of other hormones. So to simply throw estrogen into that mix, you can really create some problems. For a long time, what doctors would do is if they gave estrogen and there were some bad effects from it, they simply took the woman back off estrogen. Well, why do an experiment when you can do some pretty predictive testing? Take a look at what your hormone levels are, make a choice as to what the correct hormone is, look at the ratios of those hormones, and try to fit it together so it'll work together, rather than just throwing a hormone into the mix. So you don't want to simply take estrogen. If it's appropriate, if it's the one that's needed, then you take it. If not, then you need something else. Or maybe you need nothing at all. Maybe you need to get your health together and create a hormone balance that way. So another thing is that if you start on a hormone, you probably are always not going to be on the same dose. As you use a hormone, the levels change, the body is stimulated in different ways, and what can happen is that you'll have less of a need or more of a need of that hormone or other hormones. So you have to be looking at where you start and where you end up. You have to follow along with, with what happens. And the eventual goal uh, should likely be to get away from the hormones if possible. Now, there is a, a, a steady decrease with age that usually occurs, not always, but there is, there is that found. So a lot of doctors will try to bring people back to a physiological dose that's at, say, a younger time of life or a point where people really felt good. The problem is if you just throw estrogen at something, Yes, symptoms go away, but the symptoms come from fluctuations in hormones. And if the hormones aren't working together, you're going to create a, just a myriad of other problems. So if, if we just give you estrogen and it raises your level of estrogen to a, a higher level and it doesn't fluctuate at all, then you, you might see that you don't have hot flashes or you might be able to solve some other symptom problems, but you've created many, many problems that you didn't want to have because estrogen is a very, very strong hormone. It can cause a lot of damage. 
It can do a lot of things that you don't want to occur. So when we talk about using bioidentical hormones, it's using something that, that the body knows, that the body can use readily, that won't cause side effects, but it's also putting some thought into which hormones you're going to use when and how much. So that's why we do testing. If we can test the levels of the different hormones, at least some of the major ones, get an idea of, of what's really the right ratio, what's working together, what looks good, where should we step in, and then, then give the appropriate hormone. And that's the benefit of compounding. You don't necessarily just need to standardize the same thing for everybody. It doesn't work. Everybody's different. Everybody's biochemically different. So it really behooves you to go to somebody who's going to put some thought into it and make a choice that's more personalized to you. So that's why we tend to use compounding pharmacists because then we can choose what mixture is going to work the best and, and make smaller adjustments to get the mix just right. And then follow up and make sure that, that that's still working or that may need to be adjusted yet again. But it's not to just throw somebody on a hormone and walk away. This is a dynamic process. The hormones are ever changing. You need to look at them pretty much at the same time with, with the same lab test. You can't just say, well, I, I, I know my level was this then and this, this now and, and whatever. You really need to take a snapshot that, that fits everything together. So, so there's a reason to get some testing. We don't just testing, do testing so we can see if the hormones are there. We really need to step back and look at the whole picture. Thyroid alone, when you get your thyroid tested, really you should look at a full thyroid panel, perhaps even ass assessing antibodies. But what I'm talking about is instead of looking at one pituitary hormone, which many, many doctors do, and just making a guess as to whether the body's trying to push the thyroid more, to look at the actual levels of the thyroid hormones and figure out if they're in the correct ratio and if the body's really able to produce a sufficient amount of one and convert to another. There's a bigger picture to the story. So we want to have some more information so we can make a more critical assessment, so we can get it done better. So when we're using bioidentical hormones and compounding pharmacists, we're, we're really putting some more thought into it and customizing it down to the person that we're working with. Rather than just saying, oh, this is the dosage by, by body weight and, and, you know, this is what you take. Or you're, you're menopausal, so you need estrogen. Or you're a man and you're over your 50, so you need testosterone. Or you, you need this, or you need that. How do you know? You've got to take an assessment. You've got to, you've got to probably do a lab test. And what lab test you choose makes a difference as well. For some applications, especially the way that you're going to dose the hormone, you can use blood serum. But then sometimes saliva will actually be better. In some cases, you're going to want to look at the urinary excretory hormones and what's come out. Any of them can be used to make assessments. But depending on what you're going to use for the dosage, are you going to use a cream or a pill or are you going to do an injectable? I mean, there's some thought that should go into this. And then you have to use the appropriate testing to follow what you've done. So all of this process goes on. And if you do it right, you can get just wonderful benefits rather than just saying, well, my hot flashes are gone. Well, have you created other problems? So if we can get it all working together, we can then get to a point where the body does function well, where we do have uh, the least amount of problems, where you, your energy's up, your bone density stays. I mean, all the things that we, we see that hormones do, but the hormones have to work together. So when we talk about bioidentical hormones, really it is worth going to somebody who will make an assessment and then make a good judgment on what to give you instead of just standard dosage, standardized extract. It's, it's just, uh, it's not a cookie cutter when it comes to your body. So I, I work with, like I said, a, a doctor named John Hest. He's a medical doctor and he's become quite a, an expert in doing bioidentical hormone therapy. And it's because he's done some study. He's, he's done quite a bit of studying on, on how to fit these hormones together. And therefore, his treatments are becoming more and more successful. And there are many docs out there that, that are extremely intelligent and, and have figured this out. And it's, it's kind of a good thing that, that uh, celebrities like Suzanne Summers and Oprah Winf Winfrey have, have kind of brought this to the forefront because it is a better way to approach hormonal balance. Again, rather than just using some standard uh, that, that's supposed to apply to everybody because we're all different. So seek out somebody who does bioidentical hormone therapy and has the knowledge and the expertise to, to figure out some of these things, or at least to do a better job than simply blindly throwing a hormone at you. Nobody knows whether you need Synthroid for thyroid or whether you could use some other mix. Synthroid is not bad. It's just not for everybody. Nobody knows if you need estrogen. Estrogen is not bad. 
unless we talk about estrogens that are that give a problem to the body that are I don't want to call them synthetic let's call them non bioidentical they come from either another animal or they're made in a lab and a new nature molecule that becomes patentable uh, but it's it's altered from what you would normally find uh, many of the progesterones that that are prescribed to people are thought to be progesterones they're really not they're progestins they're they're chemical mimickers they are something different so if you're going to use progesterone you want to use a real progesterone but back to the point you want to make a correct assessment you want to make sure that you're gathering as much information as you can making the right judgment the right call and putting together the mix that's right for you it may be just one thing it may be a mix of several things that have have to be used and then back to what i always talk about there are many things that you can do to help create a hormonal balance there can quite possibly reach a day where you don't need those exogenous hormones you don't need to take a hormone from the outside because your body steps up and does its job again how do you do that you eat impeccable impeccably you get those nutrients in you exercise you have enough activity to turn on your body systems and get everything functioning well and then you take a look at where you are sometimes there are things such as metals we find many times mercury can interrupt what the thyroid gland can do and we get the mercury out thyroid starts functioning no longer need thyroid hormone that's just one example out of many so somebody needs to make proper assessments and it's a strategy it's 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 a marathon not a sprint we got to take time and assess what's going on start off by getting the mix right and then keep trying to hone it and get it better and get it to a point where hopefully your body can take over and be self-sufficient. That's called health. So this is Dr. Vince Balanzi. Check out Bioidentical Hormones. Talk to somebody who's knowledgeable on it. You can give a call to our clinic. Uh, again, if you have any questions for, for future videos, don't hesitate to, to give our office a call, office a call or, or uh, contact uh, the source of these videos. But uh, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. We'll speak again. There are over 350 videos on our channel, and I doubt you've seen them all. And the topics range from weight loss, nutrition, sexual health, all the way to psychology and mind control, and anywhere in between. And I think if you check them out, you're going to find some really interesting stuff.